You know, we've all been there, haven't we? You want to buy a German sports hatch, and you look at things like an Audi S3, a Golf R, maybe a Golf GTI, and every now and then you'll look at a Seat Leon Cooper as well. Now, in this video, I'm going to try and, in the best way that I can, settle a very common debate, and that debate is which one of those cars is the best for the money. And uh, whilst doing that, I'm going to introduce you to my favourite purchase of the week, the Seat Leon Cooper 300. Here we go then, the 2018 67 Reg uh, Seat Leon Cupra 300. Now the 300 obviously symbolizes the fact that it comes from factory with 300 PS, which is about 296 brake horsepower. Uh, there is a lot of different models of the Seat Leon. Uh, the 300 is one of the higher models and uh, this car has actually been stage one tunes and it's now running at 355 brake horsepower so it's going to make the drive of this car quite an interesting thing now for me I'm, i am excited about this video because one i've never had one of these cars in stock and two i've never actually driven one before so uh, we did have one on my channel uh, a year or so ago that was a vrs car uh, that car was running mega power it's actually one of the fastest cars on my draggy leaderboard so uh, it'll be interesting to see how well this car performs on my leaderboard when we go for a driving it in a sec this is obviously a white five-door car it has got a couple of other mods as well over the uh, stage one tune it's got a k and m panel air filter under the bonnet it's also got a res delete on the exhaust so it will sound a little bit more fruity than a normal one and then visually it's also got a maxim design front splitter and a maxim design rear spoiler now uh, going back to the debate uh, is this car better than a golf r i'm not going to summarize or conclude my thoughts on that just yet but visually i would say it's is it better I can't sit stand here and say it's better, but I do really rate the look of this car. I love that rear diffuser. I love them big chunky ex the exhaust pipes at the back there. And I like the fact that they've gone through little bits of effort. Like they put these Cupra 300 badges here, there and everywhere. Just reminding you of the special car that you're driving. This car has also got a virtual cockpit, which is a, a, an amazing thing. Like when I got in this car yesterday, by the way, we bought this literally at the end of the day last night. Uh, it's a Sunday today. I've popped in this morning to clean it, uh, get it photographed, obviously do a video, get it advertised and, uh, I'll take it for a drive as well so yeah when i looked in the car yesterday the car actually came from one of my subscribers and when he come down yesterday i put my head in the door and i was like what virtual cockpit that is such a nice thing but what's really strange about the virtual cockpit is when i've looked online a lot of these cars seem to not have them i don't know if it's an optional extra it's not actually on the option list we will go through spec list in a sec when we jump inside the car uh, but it's not on the option list uh, but either way it's got it in the car and i'm really pleased to see that in there one thing i would say about the, the sayats over the the golf r's and the s3's is there is a nice mix of materials used on the interior like you've got this carbon fiber effect on the seats and on the door cards now i would say usually that's a bit of a negative because carbon fiber effect isn't actually carbon fiber and it's a bit of a cheap way of of making things look good but i think do you know what it does pull it off you've got this white stitching above there and then you've got this nice alcantara panel on the door card as well and what is also quite nice is this carbon fiber effect is on like the bolster of the seat which probably makes them quite hard wearing this car has done 53,000 miles and you can see there this seat driver's seat is not worn too bad at all we've also got a cupra logo stamped in the seats there as well which i think is really nice so uh what we'll do now is we'll jump in we'll continue talking about the comparisons mainly between this and the golf r and we'll go through specs values and go for a drive all right let's jump in Right then, let's start the engine. See what it sounds like. Sounds like a Golf R, I suppose, which is what is expected. Um, obviously, the same engine as a Golf R, same engine as an Audi S3. Yeah, we all know that. Uh, it's all pretty common stuff but certainly on my channel I've done loads of Golf R content and uh, for those that are new I'm actually a massive fan of Golf R's I love Golf R's so for me this is a very interesting video one because um, like I say I really like Golf R's but two because the more I look at this car the more I like it so it's gonna be interesting to see what I feel about the driving in a sec so let me just um, pull up HPI quickly right so 
Here's the HPI then, and you can see at the top there, this car has got finance outstanding, well, it hasn't actually got finance outstanding on it, it's been cleared, uh, but it's a weekend, so the finance company will clear that in a week, but it's another great example that you should HPI check your cars, guys, when you're buying them, because if you buy a car and it's got finance outstanding on it, well, it ain't your car, right? So uh, make sure it's clear of finance. But we're not here to talk about that sort of stuff, we're here to talk about the spec and the value of this car. So this car was 29,000 pound new, uh, 1,200 quid's worth of optional extras, make it just over 30 grand new, okay? The optional equipment this car has got, it's got metallic paint, 580 pounds, a winter pack, which is 370 pounds, Seat sound system, uh, which was 270 quid, black Alcantara sports seats with gray stitching. Oh, that's gray stitching, that's white. I suppose it is like a really pale gray. Uh, and Nevada white metallic paint, all right? That was a free option. Again, totaling 1,200 pounds, all right? So quite nice options. It's got virtual cockpit as well, and it's got heated seat, seats, which is also very nice. So we come out of that, we look at, uh, should we look at market values? Is there any point in working at market values? Let's just head over to book values of this car. Do you know what, before we talk about the values of this car, let me just quickly show you a comparable Golf R that I found online. There's a picture of it on screen now. Uh, it's a 67 plate, five door car with a DSG gearbox and a similar spec level as well. I've done a book valuation on that car based on it having the same mileage as this car, 53,000 miles, all right? And if we compare the valuations together, the Golf R, the retail value of that car today is 25,750 pounds. Now the retail value of this car with the exact same mileage today is 21,000 pounds. So that is almost 5,000 pound difference uh, on the used market. If we look at new prices as well quickly, uh, this car new was obviously just over 29,000 pound new and the, that exact Golf R was just over for 33,000 pound new. So they're about 4,000 pound apart uh, new prices as well. So um, that is quite interesting. So a similar spec Golf R is 5,000 pound more than this car. Mm, I don't know about that. Would I want to pay 5,000 pound more for a Golf R? Obviously with a Golf R, you do get four wheel drive. So if you want four wheel drive, you've got to have it, right? You are going to pay a premium for a facelift Golf R. But again, that is making this dilemma quite interesting. So this car today, like I say, with this value, with this mileage, is valued at £21,000 retail, okay? Um, I think that's enough for the valuation and the spec chat. Let's hit the road now, yeah? Right, before we kick off the drive, let's put it in uh, Cupra mode, which is like the highest, sportiest mode that we've got. Using this button on the dash there, it's also a touch screen as well, so you can switch it uh, via the the touch screen as well if you want to so yeah we're in Cooper mode put it in manual as well the car is warm as well which is nice and we are off guys listen to that wheel spin straight away wheel spin straight away so draggy time I was hoping for like mid mid fours on the draggy times but I don't think that's gonna be achievable because uh, I don't think we're gonna have much luck putting power down in this video today guys roads are a little bit damp as well as you can see in places uh, but where the sun's been on them they are looking like they're beginning to dry out very sketchy to drive like i said about the word playful it definitely feels a lot more playful although it is a very similar setup to a golf r it does feel like a completely different car even on the interior there is a lot of differences on this interior but like this infotainment system I quite like the look of that it does look very modern it's a massive change to what you see in the Golf R and like I say it's touchscreen and it's got all the functionalities that you need on there as well and the virtual cockpit let's go back to that that is different to the virtual cockpit that you see in the Golf R although it's probably the exact same cockpit it is, uh, it's got different software, the layout's different, so I do like that as well. It's unique to the Seat Leons, and, um... Sound, sounds really good. Performance is, uh, it's a little bit... <laughs> it's a bit more... A bit more bonkers than I thought it was gonna be, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> In front tires are just trying to grab the road. You can literally hear them screeching. I just tried undoing the window just to show you what it sounds like. I'll just stop here. Undo the back ones as well. Just to give you an idea of sound, because sounds are, are good. Yeah, good. Mental car! <laughs> That is what I love about a front wheel drive car, it's just skipping down the road when you've got this amount of power. And it is only 355 brake, but 
uh, a tuned car will always drive so much better than a stock car and uh, yeah stage one tune is a night and day difference I would say obviously I've never driven a stock one uh, but it does feel a lot more crazier than I expected it would be I'll be honest with you so uh, let's now quickly cut to draggy times and then we'll continue the Golf R conversation yeah three two one Five point four four seconds. Traction's the problem, man. Uh, I think what I do is I'll get traction control off and try and feather the throttle a bit as best as I can. Give that a go. All right, traction control off. Race mode on. Careful the throttle. That's it. Flat. Pretty good. Five point oh one. There was still a lot of wheel spin. I am still battling with traction, uh, but I know this car can do better than that. Let me do a few more and I'll come back to you in a sec, all right? <laughs> I'll tell you what Draggy Times have done in a sec, but let me quickly jump back to the Golf R S3 uh, Say at Leon Cooper comparison, right? I think the difference between a Golf R and an Audi S3, uh, value-wise, they're very similar. So I think that is just a case of personal preference. But value is the key word, I think, with this, with this video, because these Say at Leon Coopers are a lot less money, right? I know you're compromising, I suppose, firstly, some people might have a bit of brand snobbery and not want to drive a Seat uh, over a VW or an Audi, fair enough. Uh, but secondly, this is a front wheel drive car, which I actually really like. I feel like it gives the car a bit more character, okay? Um, am I going right here? Yeah, we'll go right, let's go back here, this way. But what this car does offer is great value for money in comparison to those two cars. Now, I did also think, well, maybe this is more comparable to a Golf GTI Club Sport. Another great car. I've never actually had one before, uh, but I do rate them cars massively. Uh, I had a quick look on the used market. A Club Sport is also quite comparable in value to a Golf R and an Audi S3. Would I pay all that extra money for a Club Sport? No, I wouldn't. The downfall of a Club Sport is it's a prefacive car, meaning you don't get a virtual cockpit. Although it is a very special car that would bother me with a Cupra 300 with this spec you do get a virtual cockpit you also get the option of having some nice big juicy bucket seats in the car as well but as you can imagine that is a really rare option so um, would I pay all the extra money for a Golf GTR Club Sport no would I pay all the extra money for a Golf R no, although I absolutely love Golf R's. Um, would I pay all that money for a, a, an Audi S3? Probably not, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I think my favorite car of the lot is probably the Golf R, uh, but after driving this today, I think this offers something completely different to what all the other cars offer. I feel like this stay at Leon Cooper 300, it's not the most special thing on the road, but there is definitely something quite special about it. And mixing that with the price point that it's at, I think, this is a seriously cool car. So yeah, that pretty much summarizes my thoughts on this car. I do really like it. I could happily run around in this every day. It offers so much. I always say with Golf R's is they are the best all-rounder on the car market. They are such a good car. And uh, this is simply just a cheaper front-wheel drive variant of a Golf R with a different badge, I suppose. So uh, yeah, would I rule one of these out? Absolutely not. If you're in the market to buy a car in that league, Definitely, definitely try and get yourself in the drive seat one of these cars because I feel like you might quite enjoy it. So let's jump back to the draggy times now. Uh, this car done 20 to 70 mile an hour in 4.73 seconds. That's just an extremely impressive time. That makes it quicker as you'd probably expect than the uh, stock Golf R, the Mark 7.5 that I had on my channel a few months ago. Uh, but that was still battling for traction during that run. So uh, quite an interesting time, but with a decent set of tires, this car would perform even better than that, which is, is amazing. So I'm gonna wrap it up, leave it as that. Uh, I'm gonna head back to Bing Canal. Like I say, my, my aim for this for today was come in, clean the say out, get photos of it, get it advertised, and get a video done in it. So I have enjoyed filming this video. This is such a cool car. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna say goodbye now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe for a new video every Wednesday and Sunday at six o'clock. And if you're on Instagram, give me a follow on Instagram at Calvin's Car Diary. And I'll see you in my next video, all right? Bye. In the next episode of Diary of Car Trader, I've just bought this Mercedes E350D, but I won't be uploading this video on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, unfortunately. I'm going to have a little day off. I'm going to explain why I'm having that day off tomorrow on my Instagram. So, YouTube, it is a bye from me for now until next Sunday at 6 o'clock. I'll see you then.